Okay, hello everybody. We're going to demonstrate how to cut people out of places and put them in different places in different objects. Uh, cutting a person out of one scene or you know background and putting them on top of another background. Uh, it's a very common uh, thing, but this is it was requested that so that I cover um, the technique for cutting a human being out of a particular image. And I'll happily uh, describe how how that can be done very, very quickly. So well, there's a number of tools that GIMP provides. So does Photoshop. Uh, but, you know, you have these common tools. Um, that the scissor select is supposed to be a smart edge detection. I don't use it. I don't think, I don't find it accurate enough. I don't find a foreground select tool accurate enough either. It, it's more work than it's, than it's worth. The, the, the tool that I do use is the free hand select so what that does is you know it lets you make sure that the uh, feather radius feather edges radius is around you know between one and three depending on the size of the image for a small image like this I'd, you know, around one's fine but you know you just select the the corner points and you can do this reasonably quickly right on an image like this and if you make a mistake you can just drag it back to where it's supposed to be uh, you're better off cutting slightly inside than slightly outside of the image. That's a, that's an important thing to remember. Okay, so slightly in, better than slightly outside. Okay, um, so that's one thing you can do. Okay, the hair is quite interesting. The different parts of of the image have different ways of uh, you know you can cut out. So I'm going to ignore the hair for the time being. Right. I'm going to show you a couple of methods, but you can see how quickly I've managed to cut this, the rest of this image out. So I'm just going to go around here and um, do this. And okay, see so that's largely already cut out. I'm going to do, I'm just going to delete everything and put it back in here. Um, so I have some now, so I have some space to work with. Now, what I'm going to do with this is this is the other tool that I use. Uh, different things require different tools. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to go around each hair strand, uh, on, but 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 there's but I can see there's now th there's a color difference between the hair and the background. Now, in cases where you don't have a visible color difference between hair color and so if someone has black hair and the background is black too. Then that, that presents a problem that not even artificial intelligence can can really resolve because if there's no clear defining point between hair and background, then it, you have a bigger problem than that. You, you're going to have to invent where that where that crosses over. But if there is a difference, um, like this, use this tool, and you can kind of just select. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm holding the mouse button down, and I pull down. As I pull down, more and more gets selected. It, it makes a it makes a selection. Okay, now I've selected that. There's some points that haven't been selected. I can see there's some missing there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold the shift key down. That adds a plus sign to my mouse pointer. I'm going to hold the shift key down and select it like that. Okay, that's selected everything there. Everything there selected. I'm going to select that too. Same way, hold the mouse. I'm holding shift down because it's um, adding to the selection. I'm going to add that to the selection as well down here. Now there's a bit of purple here. You can see the purple's close color to the red, but it still identifies that it's different. Um, it's enough to identify. And if you go too far in, it starts to select bits of the hair. So for example, if I if I go too far, you can see it starts selecting. And I know what the threshold is. So it gives, this gives me a visual cue as to what the threshold is. Okay. Anyway, I've selected everything there. I'm just going to hit the delete key. Bang. That's done. I've cut out a human being from one image and I can put this human being on a, another image. I can put them standing here, right? So you can see that that's a reasonably good cut. I probably, um, if I was to do it again, I'd probably feather the the hair a little bit around there but it does work on one thing you don't want to do is put a daylight image like this on nighttime because that's when problems start to show up so for example 
Um, if I put this over an image with a lot of black, because this image fundamentally was in daytime, you can see the, the issues you're going to start to get, right? Keep the consistency the same. Don't copy a daylight image into a nighttime image and vice versa. So just ensure that um, you, you have a similar, similar, um, you know, background on, on one level or another. So if I use it on this background, it's fine. See? Okay, so I hope that helps. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of other things. Um, but now, that was the lasso tool. The other really good tool, as I said, is the um, is the path tool, because the path tool does what the lasso can do. The path tool can do many things. Uh, let me state that first. But one of the things that it can do is it also allows you to grab a selection. Uh, similar to the lasso tool, so you can see I'm clicking from one thing to another to another point. However, around edges that have curves, if I zoom in, you can hold the mouse button down and do this. And this provides the ability to select curves. I'll show you what I mean when I get to the shoulder bit. So, okay. So you see how it curves? Um, I can stipulate the amount of curvature that I want. Um, and then I can just go back to the lasso version of this and cut out as you would with a lasso tool. And then do the same thing up here. Okay. But as we get back here, then we can start to use the that tool for its strength. And that is the um, getting these curves. And you'll see the difference now when I um, when I finish cutting this out. But I'm not going to spend too much time. But once you've made most of the selection and you, you just press enter and it selects the whole thing. So now I'm going to cut that out. I'm going to delete that. Okay. And I'm going to paste it. Get rid of all that stuff. All right. Same thing. You saw how quickly I cut that out. It doesn't really take long to cut. And then I can do the same thing here. Uh, make a selection around the hair. Um, I've done too much because I can see there's heaps selected around here. We don't want that selected. Okay. So again, that was fairly straightforward. Now, if the background had had a pattern that was consistent with this color and style, it would be very difficult to cut around it. Even if you were to meticulously spend time and cut around using the lasso tool. If, if that was the case and I still had to cut around it, what I would do is, uh, look, I don't even use a stylus, I use a mouse. I just, I, what I would have done is um, suppose suppose I'm going to cut a shorter hair around this. What I would do is again freehand, just make it jagged as you would. Look, I'm just kind of creating this as I'm going along because this is under the assumption that okay, and then just cut that out. But this is under the assumption that the um, the background is same as the hair. So you're going to have to really invent where the hairline is if it's exactly the same. Look, I've just given her shorter hair and it's done quite realistically just by cutting around around that, you know. And if you wanted that to be a little bit better, add a little bit more um, feathering. Um, so here's the, here's the more feathered option. Okay, and if you, you know, you, if you make a mistake, you can just move it or undo. Um, okay, again, I'm going to select that. That's, that's a bit more feathered and probably a tad more realistic. One other thing you can do with hair, which um, I think is a handy little tool, um, is to uh, use the smear tool, such as this, and pick something with small points like this brush. The rate, keep that somewhat around 70. Um, and then what you can do is create bits of hair. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger, that brush, but 
so you can actually see. So imagine this person had straight hair, you could kind of, you know, extend those bits of hair out, if the, assuming they had straight hair. So you could, you know, blend that out. Um, and that kind of helps blend into the, um, into the environment around it. Okay. So there's a number of, you know, tools at your disposal. It really doesn't take, I don't find it takes long for me to cut someone out. Um, you know, it could have been any of these, could have been any of these people um, that were, that were there in the, in the beginning. But just to, just to demonstrate, see this here has very little, um, very little difference between the hair here. So what I would do is just quickly just do it myself there. And then as I get to this area, I'd probably just go around that because I've got a really good tool as I showed you. Um, and then I can still, I, even here I can use the, um, the tool to, so I'm just going to cut around here. I'm not going to, um, she wasn't at the foreground, so I couldn't really cut around her body um, independently. But again, use this um, use this tool, the fuzzy select tool. Um, you know, you can break it up so that you're doing bits and pieces all on their own. Okay, now I'm going to do this part here, delete. This part here, delete. And so on. Okay, see that's done. So hopefully that has given you some guidance. Um, there's a number of tools. If if the um, image is has curves, use the path tool. Uh, the la the lasso tool is super handy. Um, generally, add a few um, points of um, feathering to that. And, um, and so yeah, in between the path tool, the lasso tool and the fuzzy select tool, the fuzzy select tool has a really interesting way, if you remember, hold the mouse down and drag downwards or drag upwards. Okay. And that lets you select base. Now you can see that I'm trying to select her top and slowly skin starts being um, selected. So we don't want to do that. That goes beyond the threshold. So I'm just going to stop there, then hold shift down and select more. Okay, until, okay, that's good. Then I just do the same again. Then I can do the same again. And so on. I can select so much of this in this process. And I can see what the, where the, um, I don't want to select skin, so I go back up again. Okay, so there you go. And then I can cut that out. I can do whatever I want to it. I can go to hue. Um, change the color of her top to anything I want. Um, it's, um, there's a lot of options. So thanks for watching. I hope that explained the powers of different cutting tools and basically how you can um, do a number of different cuts, but I've told you what the best tools are there. So good luck with your projects. Thank you.